Hey homies, what's up? Ryan Wynn here with another episode of Tales of Breaking Into Comics. This is a video series where we look at the various ways of breaking into the industry through the lens of my personal experience. The videos will not be chronological, I'll be making them up as we go along and as the ideas come to me. And this last week I was cleaning my studio and I found this folder which contains a pitch that my friend Christopher E. Long and I made to Image Comics and Eric Larson back in 2003. So, let's take a look. Alright, so like any good pitch, you start off with your synopsis and you follow the rules that Image has laid out. It's a one-page synopsis for the series, followed by the cover, followed by five pages of art, followed by script. Give them everything they want. Don't be an idiot. Don't be a dummy. So let's take a look at this pitch. There are people who deserve to die, plain and simple. They should not be apprehended, they should never see the inside of a courtroom, and they should not live to a ripe old age behind bars. Some people deserve a bullet in the head. In this noir-style comic series, Sid and Arlie, turbulent insects inhabit a world full of pain, apathy, and hopelessness. The series follows Sid and Arlie, crusading hit bugs who navigate the underbelly of society wielding their swift and lethal justice at the behest of crime boss, Ruka, whose finely honed sense of right and wrong compels the two hit bugs to enforce her brand of justice. And then it goes on to explain the characters, Sid and Arlie. Sid being a spiritual person, or insect, I guess, and Arlie being a surly curmudgeon. But I really like this last paragraph that Chris closed with. The comic series, Sid and Arlie, explores the idea that when an individual only perceives the world in black and white, they are blind to the fact that the world functions under a gray pall. Those who dress in white and claim to hoist the banner of righteousness are sometimes the most devious and diabolical, while those who lurk down in the zero, obscured by shadows, sometimes live with an honorable code of conduct. Sid and Arlie strips away misleading guises and exposes the truth of those who are right and those who are wrong. I thought that was cool. Let's take a look at the art. All right, written by my friend Chris Long, who's written a handful of comics and a bunch of novels. Art by Ryan Wynn, yours truly. Coloring by our friend Bradley Johnson, who's now a photographer. Boondock Saints had come out a couple years before that, so that's what the cover is a swipe of. Some of you may have gotten that already. And some of you may have already noticed how poor these ellipses are. They're backwards. Ugh, that's so, that's so bad. I can't believe even in 2003 I, I let that slide. I should give Danny crap for that too. And by Danny, I mean Danny Mickey. I had been assisting him as an inker for the mm, probably two, three years before that. And he agreed to ink the cover for me. He really hooked it up. And if you're an old school Danny Mickey fan, you recognize classic Danny Mickey spirally dits in the background. We call these crosshatches dits. And most people just do a faded out pattern, but Danny would create these lovely spiral shades and tones and just white out and everything and ah, man he really he really would give life to the backgrounds of things. I think he developed that while he was working on Ghost Rider over Trent Canuga. I had done assistant inks over that and kind of gotten into that as well. So here's our bugs. Only thing is this is this is Sid and this is Arlie. I should have I should have had that switched. That was dumb. And then there's some horrible tangents going on here. There and there. Ugh. Jeez. Almost there. Just a little bit. You could have nudged that up or down. Fix those lines. Or this line. Could have saved that. I remember this was a long time ago, so... This font. We've never used this now, but... It was one of the three fonts available. And we did actually send these in, by the way. The hardbound binder 
physically sent it in. There was no emailing going on with this project. So anyways, we'll turn the page. Chris always liked to open with a splash page in all his scripts. I love it. I think it's a great idea. It's a kind of an old Marvel concept, but you jump in late to a scene in a splash page. Full page. Bird's eye view of a rundown apartment. Garbage clutters nearly every square inch. Directly in the center of the room rests the table covered with bricks of wrapped white powder. Two ants sit slouched over in their chairs with their heads lying dead on the table. Green ooze secretes out of their head wounds into the puddles on the table. The third ant sits in the chair with his hands raised to sit in Arlie, who have their guns pointed at him. The barrels of their guns are still smoking. Oh, what the? POV of the ant. He sees the silhouette of Sid and Arlie. Their eyes glow ominously. Who the hell are you guys? Ruka sent us here to congratulate you. And then they go on to kill him dead. Even Mr. Peaceful Meditation, he doesn't like drug dealers. So, bullets for the ant. Then we cut to them walking back to the bait beer factory. The joke on that is that you use bait to lure in slugs, and it's owned by slugs and operated by slugs. And These are the various hit bugs that are waiting in the lobby, the secretary. Now, the lettering here, I, I should bring it up before we get too involved here. This was not meant to be permanent lettering, but this was done in Photoshop just so that it would be easy for them to read, even though they have the script back here wanted it to, to read like a comic. They knew this was not our attempt at good lettering. Now another good script move that Chris always did was he liked to end each page with a question. It's a subtle way to compel the reader to turn the page. And on this we turn the page for our big reveal of Ruka. Sort of a Jabba the Hutt-esque gang lord. Our two dudes in shadow, pale in comparison. She's got a new job for them. She needs her two best on it. And this was supposed to be a more dramatic splash page than it turned out to be. But some nice texturing there. Composition could be better, and the background is boring as boring can get. Jeez, look at that. Nice colors by Bradley. Now, we didn't end up getting the gig, and Eric was very nice and responsive and gave us all sorts of feedback, and we listened, and we learned, and what he told us was that at this time, the market couldn't support something that looked like it was for kids, but was clearly for adults. Now, he may have been being very nice and just, our project sucked, and that was his way of saying that. But he took a lot of time to go over things. He said the art was good, but needed editing, which is totally true. I mean, geez, looking back now, there's so much, so much wrong with it, and so much wasted space. Trying to, oh, design, oh, this make it look like a design, but geez, I should just focus on storytelling, which is what I do now, and I take up space with bigger panels and more dynamic shots. You know, all this wasted space. Drawn nicely, but I needed a, a good editor to guide me. And Eric was aware of that. Now I would go on to do a project with Chris at Image with Valentino, and Valentino did guide me taught me a lot about storytelling and cover design and things like that. But this is how we used to do it. We used to send in our pitches physically like this. I think the reply was back in email, but you would still, you would send your script and your pages and everything. So that's why you would try to make the folder look cool too. Something that stood out but wasn't obtrusive or, you know, wasn't anything that would be awkward for them to get. No weird presents or prizes or anything like that. Or props. Just a nice, nice binder with everything presented inside. 
sometimes you're going to do all this work and it's not going to happen. You're not going to get the gig. They're not going to pick up your, your project. You have to be able to move on from that. You can be a little bummed, but you can't hold all of your hopes up on one project. You need to put all of your heart into it, but if it doesn't come through, you need to take the lessons learned from that and immediately put that energy into a new project. All right, well, thanks for joining me. I hope you learned something. I hope you were a little entertained. Let me know if you were or not. Like, share, subscribe, request, and comment. All the things I always say. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Stupid cat.